So I had to throw this article in here because it's been mm. kind of getting a lot of attention on the page mm. over the last 24 hours. I posted an article about Target and I said, if you're a fan of shopping at Target, be careful because shuffling through the holiday sweaters this season <laughs> may trigger you into a meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> so Target uh, received backlash for selling a Christmas sweater that some say mocked people with obsessive compulsive disorder. And what I'm going to do here <clears throat> is actually throw up that picture for you. There you go. It's kind of hovering in between us all right now. So uh, the store received criticism from customers who felt the sweater, which had the phrase obsessive Christmas disorder written on the front, belittled the mental disorder. Uh, and this one... The Twitter user that posted the picture that you're seeing right now said, as someone with OCD, I'd really appreciate it if you didn't sell my illness as a fashion statement. And this was Rain Murphy who tweeted um, this statement along with her photo holding up the sweater. So, <laughs> I mean, you've already seen the picture. I, I, I quickly showed you earlier and everything. You know... <clears throat> We got into a little discussion. One one guy yeah. actually said that in uh, the military, there were some guys sitting in the military hospitals with blown off arms and legs, and and their sh they had shirts on that said "I had a blast in Afghanistan" or something yeah. like that. And they're like making fun of their own stuff, you know. I personally, you know, when yeah. I was twenty six, I had cancer. Yeah, you know, I had lymphoma, and I. If, listen, if you can't joke around about these types of things mm -hmm. and have a positive attitude, mm -hmm. you're going to be a miserable person living with it for the rest well, of your yeah. life you know and i dropped 60 pounds from the chemo and everything and i kept on going into seeing people and they're like oh my gosh you, you look you know you've lost a lot of weight i'm like yeah i'm on a great diet plan called slim foma you know what i mean <laughs> like, <laughs> I, like i joked I about this stuff mm -hmm. all the time and if you can't joke about it mm -hmm. like you're just gonna you're gonna die a miserable person that's, that's all i gotta say especially if it's a major illness or a major thing that you're dealing with it's true. I mean, I said it today, I said it when I was talking to him, I, even when I said it too, I said, I mean, I got PTSD, but if somebody put, like, you know, that's pre-Thanksgiving stress disorder, I'd be like, yeah, you're right, because <laughs> I don't want to see half those people there anyway, man. You're, <laughs> like, <laughs> whatever. you got to be able to joke about the problems you have in life. If you're going to sit there, and here's what happens. We give ourselves... We, we, you, this lady here, she has OCD, and she's... Oh, don't call her a lady. I don't know what she identifies as. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True story. It, whoever, whoever it may... To whom it may concern, yeah, 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 all right? Yeah. It, <laughs> my anonymous just, just my it, anonymous yeah, letter yeah, to you yeah. but like honestly guy she sits there and she's complaining and getting herself all worked up over her ocd problem congratulations you've just been diagnosed with anxiety <laughs> like yeah, yeah, you, you yeah. you're creating your own problems at some point what point do you just turn it off and just say all right this is just too much if you don't like it i mean i'm sure that wasn't the only shirt they were selling there oh no like oh, yeah. i'm not a fr i'm not even a target fan <laughs> I, I was thinking about this the other day i'm like how is the you know sensitivity to these topics mm -hmm. exponentially increased over the last i don't know five to eight years because, because i feel like it. huh because mm -hmm. but it's like why was it why is it here in the last five to eight years but it wasn't 10 to 15 like i was in high school it's like this stuff wasn't like you wouldn't see something like this like making news but why in the last all of a sudden five to eight like what changed that all of a sudden, everybody's sensitive to pretty much anything, and, yeah, you, yeah. and you're a bigot if you're you just disagree with anyone. So yeah, it's like yeah. it's crazy. So I just don't know I, how that pattern made that transition. I wish I could pinpoint it. Yeah. Honestly, I do. I, I think it's it's been a generational thing of, you know, I, you know, people like me always keep on coming back to the fact that we were a generation raised up, probably the last generation that tinkered on the edge of. Uh, real trophies versus participation trophies and the helicopter parents that had to watch over everything. It's a whole and, and other day, participation know, yeah. trophies. And it's, uh, you know, I think we got into the point where it's just, you have to cater to everyone and pamper them. Or, you know, if someone is, if someone has, is feels uncomfortable at all, it's, it's the end of the world, you know? And, um, it's just pretty bad. It's bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's anything I've ever really, I don't know, identified with that cater to everyone thing. I mean, you've known me for a good amount of time now. You've known me damn near my whole life. Mm -hmm. And that's just not the way, even the way I was raised. Like, my dad, he was my football coach growing up, my sports coach growing up. If I sucked, he told me. <laughs> Dude, yeah, yeah. you suck today. <laughs> Get better, you know, like better yourself. And that's a lot of where of like what I do, where it comes from, was being raised 
to get better. You know what I mean? Like always better yourself. Don't sit around and wait for somebody. Why should I praise you for failing? When the kid next to you is not even my own daughter. Yeah, okay, you messed up. I'm like, okay, kid, well, you know what we got to do now? Not go play on your iPad. Go Now we got to do more math or we got to yep. do more of this. Like we have to better society. But we have to be strong enough as adults with our, like, I mean, I take it upon myself when I look at my daughter and like you all have kids, you know, to, I look at the, I look at the caliber of human being I've been given recently. And when I look at my daughter, I'm like, no way is that happening with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like I'm going to turn this around one kid at a time. If I have to, I'll start with my own. You know what I mean? It's uh, how old's your oldest? Eight. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Cause ours were in, uh, yep. in, um, Daycare, daycare together. together and um yeah i mean look i i'm one of those people that i refuse to be the person that said why is my kid being taught this in school and why you know why this why that in school before they even hit school i got i got elected to the school board i wanted mm -hmm. to make a difference i wanted to go over the curriculum and everything and i moved back into this area because of our school district mm -hmm. being so great and unfortunately while the school district here is great it's the federal mandates coming down on the, on the educational system, no matter where you are, that are completely messing it all up. And, and these kids are, these kids are left in the dust either way. You're, you, you, they have this blanket mentality of let's teach everyone the same way instead of focusing on individual needs. You, so instead they, they take the average uh, student in the classroom and, and cater to those kids. And then the ones that are too slow at learning, you know, they're getting left behind. <clears throat> and the kids that are excelling are bored to death in the back of the classroom, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, and there's nothing you can do about it's it. Promotion of mediocrity at its finest. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, unreal. Now, uh, back to this, uh, this um, person. <laughs> <laughs> here uh yeah just so you know yeah it's uh it's a sad story actually they didn't say but apparently it took her about 25 minutes to uh to uh put the sweater back into place and <laughs> and her original meltdown started over the fact that the price tag was 24.96 instead of a, <laughs> instead of an odd number no, really? call it taxes. <laughs> the, the, the funny thing about the sensitivity we we're talking about earlier when austin told me that the story I thought I thought she was mad because it said Christmas on there. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I'm <laughs> like, another one for you. Well, yeah. So absolutely. Uh, it's, yeah, it's fine. You, you don't even know which way to go with that one. You're like, well, which part of this she angry over? <laughs> nope. Yeah. There's so many things she could be angry over right now. <laughs> go ahead, have at it. It's only Fritzen. It's only a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, it's only cloth. Don't worry. I'm sure the co the, the cotton didn't come from Hobby Lobby. Uh, well, we're, right. we're five years away from Chris uh, from Target not being able to put Christmas on sweaters. Target. <laughs> Target. Not to get into a completely different topic and, and go down this rabbit hole, I don't even want to touch it right now, but Target took a huge loss in stocks when they announced the um, bathroom deal that you could use whatever bathroom that you identify with and yeah. everything. People just boycotted it mm -hmm. and stocks dropped and they thought that this is temporary because everybody loves Target, it's going to bounce right back. It did not. Mm. It stayed down. Um, but I have to say I like Target's response on this case here. Mm -hmm. Because they actually responded to the backlash with an apology, but it stopped itself short of removing the item from the <laughs> stores. <laughs> so this is the best part. They said, we never want to disappoint our guests and we apologize for any discomfort. So this is Josh Thomas, a spokesman for um, Target. He told this to New York Daily News. We currently do not have plans to remove this sweater. <laughs> so it's just like, we're sorry, but get over it. <laughs> Because actually, it's selling like hotcakes. Mm. <laughs> and you just helped us out with the yeah, marketing. Thank you. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's a win win. Yeah. So, Target was previously at the center of a similar controversy involving selling a woman's t shirt <laughs> with the word trophy on the front. Mm. And that shirt inspired a successful petition for its removal. Uh, so, it, it was, did end up being removed. But the, the petition itself said the truth is that millions of women and young girls are taken as trophies every year in war, sex trafficking, slavery, and rape. Uh, labeling any person as a trophy is demeaning their humanity and objectifying them as a tangible object that can be bought, used, and disposed of. Now, first of all, that's true. 
Okay, all that stuff is true. And actually, as a matter of fact, there's more slaves today mm -hmm. than there ever was before. And it has a lot more to do with sex slavery mm -hmm. and kids being bought and sold Absolutely. out to that and everything. It's it's a horrible situation. Mm -hmm. By the way, check out OUR, Operation Underground Railroad, another charity that we've spotlighted in the past that helps out with that. But Project <clears throat> AK-47. That's not thing. what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What we're talking about here is women that love the attention and humor of being labeled a trophy wife yeah there's <laughs> or a trophy girlfriend and that's probably why they didn't spe specify wife on it or girlfriend or anything it they just left it at trophy yeah you know what i mean and, and i mean that's true i mean and that's another thing that we've done as a society like we've allowed yeah. that to be okay yeah. i don't want my daughter to ever think that i, I mean i preach that hard that i mean it it don't ever disrespect yourself. Like if you're if your only goal is to aspire to be a trophy wife in life, like what kind? Like sorry, Leslie. No. <laughs> <laughs> she she actually literally I read this statement to her before. She's like, I totally want to be a trophy wife. She's like, just make the money. I'll, so, I'll like, do whatever I see, stay like, home. There and it is. That's a societal crap. thing. What are you so angry about? Like you either want it or you don't. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Pick a side. You can't ride down the middle of that fence. Oh, the friend's my friend, so I'm going to be offended. You're yeah. either offended by it or you're not. But at the yeah. same time, don't be the person that's offended by it. And it's like I'm. I'm gonna marry a doctor. Yeah, it's, you know what I mean. It's, and, like, and we're we're gonna get to it in the NFL thing. I I say there's only two people that write the book of your life, mm -hmm. and we'll get to that later on. But yep, you know what I mean. Don't let someone else's crap write your story on how you are offended by some something or how you're going to react. No, you know, charge your own life. Own it. <laughs>